In today's video, I'm going to create a Vue.js app and import the model that we already prepared on the previous video and predict house prices using TensorFlow.js. So let's start. The final result is a Vue.js app that you can use to predict house prices given its size, amount of rooms or parking spaces, and so on. Last time, we talked about training a model using Keras and Python. Then we also discussed the need for preparing the model for TensorFlow.js and also sharing the needed information for pre and post processing the inputs and outputs. Let's use that model and information and create our web application. For the Vue.js app, I used the same template I've been using from the last couple of videos. I removed and then changed a couple of things. If you want to know how this project was configured, please watch my previous videos in which I create a simple TensorFlow.js application using Vue.js from scratch and another one in which I create a model in Keras and then import the model into a Vue.js app. For this project, first I copied the shared folder from our Python project into the static folder so that we can reference it from the JavaScript application. I changed the references to the real estate price predict inside the index that view page. Then I renamed the TensorFlow example component to real estate price predict, removed all the HTML and JavaScript code related to training the model. I also added text fields on the HTML and properties of the data object for the size, number of rooms, baths, and parking spaces a drop-down for the neighborhood and a button and corresponding method for predicting the value for the house given the values above. I start by loading tensorflow.js, a library for one hot encoding, the list of neighborhoods in JSON format, and the mean and variance required for transforming the inputs and outputs. First, we have some methods for initializing everything before we can start predicting. We have the mounted method in which we call the other initialization methods. On the initialize scalar method, I create tensors for the mean and deviation. This last one is derived from the variance by calculating the square root. The initialize one-hot encoder method uses the one-hot encoder library to create a vector representation of each neighborhood in a way that it's compatible with what the Python model required, and then it is stored in a dictionary. I load the model using TensorFlow.js in an async method using the model from the static shared folder, set that the model is ready for use and a text to prompt the user to start predicting the values. Then we have some methods for helping us making predictions. Given that when we created the model in Python, we use the standard scalar we need to do the same transformation here. So, using TensorFlow operations, we can take a tensor for example, subtract the mean and divide by the deviation for scaling the inputs. We apply the reverse process to unscale a tensor by multiplying the deviation first and then adding the mean. We also have the preprocess inputs method that takes the inputs and the selected neighborhood. 
create a tensor for the inputs so that we can apply different operations to each row and column, create another one for the one hot encoded vector of the neighborhood, call the scale method with the inputs, concatenate the neighborhood vector, and then expand the tensor to have an additional dimension. And the post process method that just calls the unscale method with the outputs, mean and deviation. Finally, we have the project method, which is the one triggered when the user clicks the predict button. First, it preprocesses all the inputs, uses the model for predicting the house price given the values entered by the user, post processes the result so that we can understand the value and then renders it on the UI and on the console. Okay, let's open a terminal and install all the dependencies. Start the dev server so that we see the application on the browser. Then open on the browser the URL that appears at the end. Now start entering some values. You can compare them with the ones already seen in Python. Awesome, congratulations and thanks for watching. And if you liked the video, please hit subscribe.